Wrestling fans around the corner and around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm the Warlord. Brand new Wrestling Insider Special Edition is coming up next. Grab your beverage, grab a snack, stand by. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is, if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, Get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor of Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. You have to be a wrestling fan. You'd be crazy to be tuning in right now. I'm Dan Marotti, along with one of our new our partners in crime on the show, The Warlord. The holiday season is here. I wish you and your family not a happy holidays, but a Merry Christmas. Thank you, man. It's really nice. Appreciate I, you, too. I didn't offend you. No. All right. All right. No, I'm not a cancer culture person. All right. You never know. I, I have to bring this up because it was another question presented by the fans. Um, great offense was taken in a recent interview you did about the late Ray Fernandez, the mighty Hercules. Have you heard about this? No. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, I have scoops for you left and right after our yeah, Zeus you episode. Yeah, you do. You got a lot of stuff for me, man. Yeah, you do. Uh, well, apparently you told the story, and I think maybe the... the, the you know, sometimes people take a, a sentence and they turn a book into it. No. For example, are you familiar with Marty's murder confession from over the summer? No. You didn't know that Marty Gennetti confessed to murder this summer? No. Oh, my dear no, Lord. I'm Mick Foley. I, I live on a little really really I guess I live on an away from everybody. You live in your own private I, I stay in my little hermit kingdom. I think Daniel I need to go, too. This is JBL, and you're watching well, the Well, to make a long story short, over the summer, Marty had a... A moment of reflection in life, and he felt like he wanted to open up. And he shared a story that when he was 13 years old, he wanted to buy some weed down at a bowling alley he worked at in Georgia. And at night, when it was all said and done, the guy that he went to buy it from attempted to sexually assault him. Mm -hmm. And Marty said the only thing he could do was grab a brick he found nearby, and he bashed the man's skull in. Well, he... Almost 50 years after the fact, he decides to share this story. The uh, show all of a sudden is on TMZ, uh, People Magazine, all the New York newspapers. Inside Edition was calling this TV studio looking for Marty. Now, mind you, Marty doesn't live in Boston, so you no. can imagine a yeah. uh, TV studio is absolutely thrilled to be getting these phone calls. But, um, you know, there's, a, there's more to the story than meets the eye with what happened to poor Marty. But it, there's a, a reason I bring this up. What really angered me was the internet headlines were Marty Jannetty kills a guy. There was a gay <laughs> newspaper that said WWE superstar kills gay man. Now, you know what? Those types of things get to me because we both know Marty well enough. You know him much better than I, I do. I, I love Marty. Marty's it's, a great person. But you know what? With the story I just told you, would that be the headline you use? No. A 13-year-old kid trying to fend off a sexual predator. I'll tell you this, those types of people usually don't just do it once. That's right. So I imagine this man at the bowling alley that was trying to sell middle school-aged Marty a little weed, it, it wasn't his first victim, and whatever may have happened that night, it probably wouldn't have been his last victim. I think when you eliminate a scumbag like that off yeah. the streets, they deserve a pat on the back. 
They don't deserve yeah. to be crucified on social media. Oh, anybody That's ever, my opinion. I, I don't know what, about anybody, you. Anybody ever touch any of my kids or touch my grandson that I raised, which I got eight grandkids, touch my grandson I raised that's 10 years old, they ain't going to be around to tell next day. Ain't going to happen. Or my, or my stepdaughters, whatever. Ain't, they, they will not be around. I don't care. Will not be around. I mean, Marty is Marty. He's a unique individual. I think he's a great human being. I think he has a good heart. He's in a lot of pain right now because of his ankles, one of which he just had a reconstructed. I don't know if you know about that, but Marty is on the mend. But that, and again, it's going to tie into what we're going to bring up. But I, I was just so bothered by the fact that people took that story that he told. It was like they didn't even listen to the it's, story. It's media. It's like they didn't even listen to what was said. Media that just, this guy was yeah. a, a, a teenage boy yeah. with this man trying to rape him, but the cool Twitter and Facebook headline was, oh, let's say the WWE wrestler killed some guy. Because media always wants to make it worse than what it is. They want to put their old headlines to make whatever they want to say. Well, That's so all you, they want. So you know what? I think maybe this subject is good after what came out about you this week. Uh, you, and, and I think maybe where the fans get confused was, I think you were talking about a tour overseas that had nothing to do with WWF. I nope. think it was post-WWF. It, yes, it was, it was just, uh, it was, uh, uh, well, it's, I forget what we term them and that stuff, but yeah, it wasn't with the WWE at all, or WWF at all. And Warrior no. was the big headliner on Warrior the Warrior was a big headline, Ultimate Warrior, yes. And a lot of ex-WWF guys at the time that yes, had just was. left was there, yourself, yep. Hercules, and other... And you yep. said Hercules, he had a rough flight. Hercules had a, had a rough time. I mean, you know, when he left, you know, people don't realize that in the end, Hercules was, uh, you know, he was homeless. He, he didn't have anything anymore in that stuff, you know. Hercules, um, you know, like I say, you know, Hercules was a, was a very good man. He's another person. He'd give you the, the uh, shirt off your back. He really would. He would do whatever he could for you. Uh, you know, and beyond just being a great wrestler. The guy was a great wrestler. Very believable. Yes, he was. Very Hercules, believable. Hercules was a great wrestler. Yes. And, and on that flight, you, he, you said he, he took something that made him go a little over the top. Yeah, you know, he had been drinking, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, that was Hercules. Hercules drank some of that stuff, and, you know, I, you know, I didn't see him take anything, but, you know, he, he got in those, one of those moods where he grabbed, and, and this is straight up. He grabbed the woman next to him, put her in a headlock, you know. And, and the or, passenger actually, on he, the plane. He, he didn't grab her in a headlock. He grabbed her with it. He had big hands. Uh -huh. He grabbed her by his big hands. All right. That was Herc, you know. And so. So he started working the passenger on the plane next to him? Yeah. Oh, my God. So <laughs> they went ahead and they got the captain. And the captain came back to talk to him. And, you know, Herc, you know, he didn't know where he really was at the time. And that so he grabbed him in a headlock, you know, just. It, it was just a way of being a wrestler. And the captain was able to get away and went back. And after that, Hercules was in the scene and he passed out. So we landed. It was actually in Munich, Germany. And uh, the captain said, everybody stay in your seats and that stuff, you know, right now, because we have some people coming on board. And uh, Hercules was the only one. He didn't hear the announcement, so he's the only one that got up. <laughs> and he's up there, he's up there opening up the thing and that stuff. And all of a sudden, here comes the German police with their Uzis and all that stuff, you know? And he turns around and goes, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I don't think he remember what even happened. That's the whole thing. I don't think he remember really? what happened. I don't think so. The funniest thing about the whole story is we went through customs. He was already sitting on the bus for a long time. They didn't even wait. They just put him right in the bus. So I looked. I said, Herc. I said, maybe I should do that next time. That way, I, I don't have to go through customs. I'm... I'm right on the bus. They just put him right on the bus. They just didn't want to deal they with it. They didn't want to deal with it. Now, see, they didn't as like, you relay that story to me, that doesn't sound like a personal attack. Her it sounds Hercules, like you sharing the story. I would never say nothing bad about Hercules. Hercules was a good man. He had a good heart. You know, Hercules never hurt anybody in that stuff, you know? Just Hercules, just, you know, like a lot of the guys, he had some demons. He had some demons, you know? And, uh, but that was just about everybody in the industry in that era. Listen. I mean, when you're on the road 300 days a year, yeah. ne uh, nearly on an airplane for probably 275 out of those days, I mean, you're talking about circus animal life. Yeah. You need to take things to be able to wake up. You need to be able yeah. to go to sleep. You need to be able to navigate life. You need to be able to work. People don't realize that in that day and age, we were, we were working maybe 320 times a year, maybe more. 
maybe more. Because in the, in the winter times, on Saturday and Sundays, we were working two shows a day in different cities. When we were flying to a city, right after that show, you catch a plane, fly right to the next day, do a show that night. Right. And the next day, you're in another city that afternoon and another show that night again. I mean, it was insane. So guys, back then, we, don't, they don't, we didn't have what they have today. Today, you got chiropractors. You got doctors. You got everything there for you to help you out. You get treated like a human being. Yes, and an you athlete. do. You get treated like a human being the way you should when you're a professional athlete. In our time, we had no, we had just had two road agents. Now, they don't know nothing about anything. Yeah, I don't think stuff. Jay Strongball was yeah. going to do chiropractic no. work on it. Rene Goulet and all them people. <laughs> Tony well, he might have wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get to a town, you didn't know what chiropractor to see. Because there's a lot of quack chiropractors. Sure. So you could go there and they could adjust you wrong and you're even 10 times worse. You didn't know what doctor, even if you could even get in to see a doctor to get if you're, you're sick or anything else, you know. So you couldn't do that. So we had to travel being sick, hurt, um, exhausted, everything else. So, you're, so guys are doing everything they can to keep going. So guys are taking stuff to keep them up. Guys are taking stuff to keep them going. Guys are taking stuff for a lot of pain because they're in a lot of pain all the time. Your backs, your shoulders, your necks, your knees, everything's hurting. I mean, it, it's rough. And it was just, it was the way it was back then. The problem is that when you're done, you don't know how to stop. You don't know how to stop. So you keep going because you don't know anything better because you're just the pain you're in all the time. Um, it, it's a very, it was a very hard life back then. And very you, hard. You know what gets me? And this is always difficult for me to broach, and I say it with just about every guest, even though it's difficult for me to broach, because it's no secret, we have a lot of great friends in WWE. Yep. WWE does so much for us. The things they've done for the, the, my little friend that we talked about for Christmas, they gave him one of the big uh, authentic championship belts just for his birthday. It's hard to talk negatively about people involved in that company, and I'm not talking about people. I think I'm talking about more of a culture. Yeah. As you know as a WWE alumni, that if you have the need, WWE will pay to send you to a first-class yes. rehabilitation center for drugs and alcohol. Yep. From yeah, I'm, yeah, A I'm, to Z. Yes, I mean, I, I, it's a great thing. But man. here's my problem with that. And this is the one that always sticks to my mind because I spoke to her a couple of weeks before she passed. Sherry Martell, mm. trying to be the female Bobby Heenan, she went out there and destroyed her back. Yeah. And what Sherry needed, and if you broke down the whole story, what Sherry, the root of Sherry's problem was she needed a rod in her back. Yeah. Now, a rod in the back, and when we're talking about, when I say first class treatment that WWE gives those that need it for drugs and alcohol, these centers, I don't know how familiar you are with them, but I've spoken to many, you're talking high fives, low six figures for mm. these days. Yes. They're spending big money to try and rehab these talents in need. But here's my point. Now imagine if they went in and had Sherry's back fixed. Imagine if she slowly didn't need what she was taking, which yes. ultimately led to her passing away. Yes. Not only would it be cheaper for WWE financially at the end of the game, if you want to look at it from a business aspect, yep. but from a human aspect of it, the human being is still alive. Look at Marty's, I, mean, I don't know if His you've ankle. seen what Marty, mm -hmm. well he just, thank God, he just had major reconstructive surgery on that. But let me ask you this, what would cost more? The 10 grand it took to fix that ankle and be repaired and put him on the mend? Or to send him to drug and alcohol rehab, which is going to cost them 100? He wouldn't it, need it, the, it doesn't make sense he, to me. He wouldn't, need the, he wouldn't need the drug and alcohol anymore because it, 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 Marty's ankle is one of the worst ankles I've ever seen in my life. It's like he's, <clears> when he took it's like the one foot time, shifted, yeah. and he's walking on the bottom of his ankle. Yes, when he when I saw that, I mean, it almost made you sick. I mean, it's like Marty. The Sheiks is the same way from that car accident we were in. It, it's it's rough, you know. I mean, you know, the the, the guys need help. They need help, you know. And like I say, you know, no longer would you ever have to have the the uh, pain pills, <clears throat> the alcohol to take away your pain. You wouldn't need it no more. It's not a one-step process. I mean, the answer isn't as simple as snapping the no. fingers. But I, I truly believe that there is a much better solution than the one that exists now. When yeah. so many of the guys gave of their bodies, of their lives, to this great industry. I think when this industry is done right, it is the greatest form of sport, yes, action, yeah. excitement, entertainment in the world. But 
a lot of the boys, when their time has come to hang up the boots, so to speak, they don't know what to do to, at that point, and they need help transitioning out of it. And I'll say this, I also know that right now WWE has done a magnificent job of trying to prepare the superstars of tomorrow for life after wrestling, yeah. and that's great, but it doesn't help the problem of all the guys that are still living now. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of guys that, and from my generation that are hurting. Um, you know, they're older, they don't know what to do anymore and that stuff, you know, and at this age, unless you were prepared or you had done something, you, you can't find anything. Um, it's very, very tough, you know. I, I know in my instance, I got into the security, uh, bodyguard security, because I knew that was going to be the wave of the future, and as well as all the things going on in this crazy world right now. No kidding. It's, uh, it's a great business. People always need security, and a lot of people always need bodyguards. They need that these days. How so, long have you been doing that? Um, I've been doing it since 2001. Really? Since oh, 2001. so quite a while now. I've, okay. I've been around some good people. I mean, I was around, uh, I took care of Kimball Slice when he was alive going to the ring. I oh, took, wow. I worked with uh, 50 Cent. When, really? Uh, he just, uh, 2003, when he had just become real popular and that stuff, you know. Um, you're sure that it's your birthday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've worked with uh, quite a few people on that. Wow. Yeah. And you're still doing it now? Still doing it now. Well, I, I wouldn't want to mess with them, believe me. But then again, the condition I'm in, you could send me over to a nursing home and half of them could probably <laughs> take me out. But I just wanted to set the record straight that you meant no malice towards Hercules slash Ray Fernandez. No. I never met the man. I've heard nothing but glowing things about him from the interviews we've had with different guests here in the studio. And again, we are, uh, I tried to find the interview online. I guess I went on YouTube and I guess Paul Roma took great offense to this. Uh, and I just wanted to hear what he actually said, Listen, but I couldn't I, I find it. I don't know why it. Paul Romo would take offense because I, Paul's another good person that, you know, there's nothing bad there saying about Hercules. It was just the way it was at that time. It's just the way it was. It was one experience. It was just one experience in that stuff. You know, and there was nothing bad to say about Hercules there. Nothing. It was just, it was, it was, it was actually an ordinary thing that us, us at that time, we did in wrestling. You know, it's just, it's the way it was. Some of the airplane stories that Marty has told over the years <laughs> makes that one seem like a, yeah, a nursery I, rhyme. You yeah, know what I mean? I know some about Marty, too, and that stuff, you know. <laughs> I know some about Marty, and I've seen some about Marty. Oh, I'm sure you have been on those planes some of those, Marty, I know. those red eyes. <laughs> yes, those red eyes. The red eyes special. Oh, yeah. The blankets. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to set the record straight. Do you think we set the social media cool kids headline straight now? Yes, I mean, of course. There was nothing vicious I, th about this statement that you no, made. Nothing vicious whatsoever. Nothing. He Her was one of the boys, as Her far as I know. He was and a he good was guy. Being, and he's being one of the boys that day. Yeah. It, that's how it was for us on flights. I mean, it's just Think the way about, it was. I'm sure that big body was crammed into a, yes. a, a coach seat. Yes. Yeah. You know. I and mean, he needed something too. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, just be able to tolerate it's, it's the how pain. we were at that time. Yeah. It's just how we were. That was it. Hercules wasn't, he wasn't trying to hurt nobody in that stuff, you know? And, you know, and I would never hurt Herc, you know, because, like I said, I loved Herc. Herc was a, a good man. He had a, and Herc had a big heart. Big heart. So, you know, people, people just got to stop looking at things too much these days. It's, people they look got, for the negativity. They got to knock that stuff off. They look for the negativity. They got to stop, they got to stop looking for the negatives. I don't look for the I look for the positives. I want to look up, not down. That's what I want. What did Michelle Obama say, even though I know you're not a Democrat, oh but when they go low, we go high. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice life raise, though. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. You always, you always want to say the glass is half full, not half empty. Yeah. Because you always want to be positive. Always. Well, it's unfortunate that Hercules isn't here to tell the story himself again. Another one I don't of know the brothers remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I really, truly don't think he would be, even remember that. I really don't. Well, it's just it would be nice if he was here to tell the stories that he did remember. But I know, I know I'd get him laughing. What's that now? I'd get him laughing with it. Oh, really? He would laugh. Oh, yeah. He would just laugh. Yeah. And you guys, you were, man, you were part of the same faction at a point with Slick, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, because you guys did a six-man at um, yep. SummerSlam 91. Yes, we did with Paul, we'll, and Paul and Herc. We'll get there as we go through the, the chronological life of the warlord in WWF. But before we get into that part of the series again... I just wanted to give this gentleman a chance to clear the air, maybe clear up a, a couple of internet headlines again. I wish I saw the interview that was spoken about. I couldn't find it. You know, YouTube is a big place, I guess. There's yeah. a lot on there sometimes. Sometimes you have to look, which is why, fans, we always suggest 
subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. You get access to over 2,000 free videos. And if you give the videos a thumbs up, it helps YouTube know that wrestling fans are liking what we're doing, and it shares it with even more fans. It's a cool thing. You're mesmerized by the cameras again. I'm mesmerized. <laughs> that, cam right. that camera's getting me really good today. All right. Well, <laughs> for my friend the warlord, I'm Dan Marotti. Next time he joins us, fans, you're in for a treat. We started along the same chronological timeline with Marty Jannetty because they both came to WWF around yeah. the same time. I think it's going to be really cool to hear some of the same stories, events, experiences that Marty's told through his eyes through the warlord's eyes. I'm really looking forward yep. to this as someone that was, this is the era I grew up with. In 88 when you came in, I was probably in the third grade and I, I was just so immersed in it. Wow, they, that's really dated me right there. <laughs> yeah. That's dated me good. I'm a lot younger than I look, but <laughs> you try getting blown up with the iron cheek by a drunk driver and tell me how, yeah. how oh, that's, you had the Pizza Hut accident. Yeah, so pizza we're feeling accident. each other's pain, I yep. think, probably. Yep. All right, well anyway, we don't want to talk car wrecks uh, we just wanted to set the record straight on this particular story about a good man, a man that gave of his life uh, to the professional wrestling industry. He gave of his body. He took the majority of the year away from his family to be on the road to give wrestling fans the best experience possible. So to the mighty Hercules, who I wish I had a chance to meet, if I had a hat on, I'd tip my cap to you. <laughs> so for all you great fans at home, we continue to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully we don't offend you with the C word. Be well, stay healthy. Good night. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now.